In this video, I want to go over credit memos in QuickBooks Online. To demonstrate this, I'm going to be using the QuickBooks Online sample company. To create a credit memo, you would just go to New, Credit Memo. A credit memo is simply a way to reduce the amount owed from a customer. There are a lot of reasons you might give a customer a credit. Maybe they weren't satisfied with the service or product, or they need to return a product or something along those lines. Now, I do wanna mention that a credit memo would be to reduce the amount the customer owes you. It is not for issuing a refund. If you wanna issue a refund in QuickBooks Online, then you would be more likely to use the refund receipt feature. And you also may be asking why you would do a credit memo instead of edit editing the original invoice. And there are a lot of reasons for that. Maybe the invoice was created in a different tax year. Another reason could be that you want your transactions in QuickBooks to reflect the natural flow of what actually happened. In other words, you want it to reflect the sequence of events. So maybe the invoice was created a month ago and now a month later, you're giving them a credit. And by doing two separate transactions, you can see when the invoice happened and when the credit happened. And it's just overall a better audit trail and then another reason is maybe the customer already paid the invoice and now they're returning something. And instead of trying to edit an invoice that was already closed out and paid, you might decide to go ahead and do a credit memo. So for whatever reason you're doing a credit memo, I'm going to demonstrate how to do this and I'm going to have a couple different scenarios so you can see some different examples. And a credit memo is simply short for a credit memorandum. So if you're an accounting student, you may have seen that terminology in your accounting textbooks. And basically it's called a credit because we are reducing accounts receivable. And in accounting, we use debits and credits to increase and decrease accounts. And accounts receivable is an asset. And when we subtract or reduce from accounts receivable and other assets, we do credits. So that's where the name came from in case there's any confusion there. Now, like I said, you can use the menu over here, but I'm gonna go ahead and go to the customer screen. I like to do things like this from the customer screen, just so I can see the history of the transactions for that particular customer at the same time that I am creating the credit memo. First, we're gonna do a credit memo for Paulson Medical Supplies. And you can see that this company has one open invoice. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this so we can see the whole thing. There are multiple line items on this invoice, but what we're gonna focus on is the design services product or service. This company was sold four hours at $75 per hour. And for example purposes, let's do a credit memo for two hours. So maybe they weren't satisfied with the service and the company agreed to give them a credit of two hours. So what I would do is click on new transaction and then I would choose credit memo. I would put whatever date was relevant. I'm just gonna use today's date. And then the product or service should match the original invoice. In this case, it's going to be design. And we're gonna put two as the quantity. And I'm just gonna type a custom message or custom description. And then I just want to point out also that if this is a sales tax related item, you would want to make sure the sales tax was on here as well. In this case, it's not, there was no sales tax on the original invoice, and this is not a sales tax item. And then once I'm done, I would just click on save and send to send the customer a message or a receipt, or I would simply choose save and close. 
and you can see that QuickBooks automatically created a payment, a zero payment, to apply the credit memo to the open invoice. I'm just going to view that so we can see it. The payment date is on the date of the credit memo. It's a zero amount received and it is simply applying the $150 credit memo to the invoice. If QuickBooks did not automatically do that, you would choose whichever invoice you wanted to apply the credit to, click on receive payment, and you would just make sure the information on the payment was correct. It would need to be a zero payment and you would want to make sure and you would want to make sure that the $150 was applied to the invoice that you want to apply it to. Now let's go ahead and look at the reports so we can see how that looks. We're going to look at the, let's look at the balance sheet first. If I look at accounts receivable, I'm just going to click on it to drill down. You can see the minus $150 down here at the bottom. So it is reducing accounts receivable. Let's go ahead and look at the profit and loss as well. And we're going to look at design income. And you can see the original invoice was $300 of design income, but now we're subtracting the $150 credit from the credit memo. I'm going to go back. This was under accrual accounting. Remember that customer had not paid the invoice yet. Let's see what this looks like under cash basis. So if I go back to design income, I can see the $150 credit memo, but under the original invoice, I only see $47.13 of income here instead of the $300. And let me just click on that invoice so we can go look at it. And I just, I just want to point out here that this invoice is showing as partially paid from that credit memo. There's still an open balance. In QuickBooks, if you have a partial payment, QuickBooks, is, QuickBooks doesn't know that you're applying $150 to the 300 line item. The software is going to apply that partial payment to the line items as a percentage of the total. So that is why you see a partial amount here. So I just wanted to point that out so you're aware of it. Once the invoice is paid in full, this is going to be 300 and it's going to even out. But at this point, it is going to look like this. Let's look at another example, but this time we're going to look at an example with an inventory item that was returned. So we're going to use the example of sprinkler pipes. Right now there's 31 on hand. The sales price is $4 each and the, and the cost is $2.50 each. So I'm going to go to this customer, Mark Cho, and this customer has one invoice open. Let's edit this so we can see it. And there's four sprinkler pipes on here at a sales price of $4 each. And let's just assume that the customer only needed two of them and they are returning two items. So I would just click on new credit memo and I would put in the item. and the quantity is going to be two. Now this one did have a sales tax rate, so I am going to make sure that the sales tax is correct here. So the amount to refund would be the $8 with tax 864 and I'm just going to save and close. And again, this payment was applied to the invoice automatically by QuickBooks and we can view that to see it. It's a zero total payment 
and it's just applying the 864 against the invoice amount. If it doesn't do this automatically, you would have to click on receive payment here and put in that information. Let's go ahead and look at the reports. This time I'm going to go ahead and look at the inventory valuation summary. And you can see that now the sprinkler pipes shows a quantity of 33 instead of 31. So I'm just going to click on that so we can see the detail and change that to all dates. And you can see a minus four items when they were sold on the invoice. And then now it's adding two items back into inventory. Let's look at a balance sheet. And let's go to accounts receivable. And you can see the $8.64 right here beside the credit memo. So it is subtracting that from accounts receivable. And it should also show in the inventory asset account as well. So I'm going to click on that. Remember the cost was $2.50 each. So that's a total of $5 going back into inventory. So it's being added with a positive number. Let's look at the profit and loss. This time we, have, we are looking under sales of product income. And there is the $8 reduction in income when those goods were brought back and we reduced the sale price to the customer. And we should also see this under cost of goods sold. There is it being subtracted back out of cost of goods sold at cost. And I did show this under accrual basis. If it was under cash basis, it would look a little bit different. And then one last thing I want to mention, if you go to the gear icon and go to account and settings, you can go to sales and then you have this custom transaction numbers setting. You can turn that on. And what this allows you to do is edit the numbers on invoices and credit memos. So let me go back to that credit memo I just created. Now you can see that I have the option to edit this credit memo number. If I wanted to do something, for example, if I want all credit memos to have CM on them, I could change that if I have that setting turned on. So I just wanted to mention that that is an option if it's something that you want. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and thank you for watching.